Okay, welcome. This is another technical technician video from Diagnation. And the, uh, the title of this video is Honda Power Window Scope Diagnosing with Issues. And basically, uh, I'll give you the whole backstory about what, uh, what kind of developed this, this, this video. And uh, this is the 2004 Honda Accord, which I drive. And I went in for a state inspection and the window, the uh, driver's side window did not work. It would not roll down. Um, and of course I had to get that dealt with to get the, uh, the inspection done. So, uh, I, um, I priced that one at the, at the Honda dealer. Uh, I thought it was pretty pricey. I don't know, about $270 for the whole window motor and regulator assembly. I went online, I found a company called Rock Auto and, um, got their price. Their price was really cheap. Uh, I don't know, $36 or something. And, um, I had it sent to me, uh, I put it in and everything worked and, uh, for a while until I started to hear some ticking when the window was closed. Um, basically what was happening, the window was being activated when it shouldn't have been. And after like that for a while, it pretty much burned out that, uh, that power window motor. And, uh, I called, uh, Rock Auto up. They guaranteed, they warranted it for me. They sent me another one and I put it in. And this time I had to do something. I figured there's some, there were some issues with the, um, with the switch, the actual, the power window master switch, which I'll explain when we look at the schematic, um, that switch was intermittently sticking. So what I had to do was, uh, I didn't want to put, replace the power window master switch. So I put a little, uh, toggle switches, right? As you see on the schematic where it says SW, that's my little toggle switch to pretty much keep the system from not working unless I plug the switch in. Anytime I want to use the window, I have to plug that switch in. And when I'm done, I have to, uh, open that switch but nonetheless that's some that's my, my problem i'll deal with that but um i thought it'd be a good case for a uh, for a scope case study uh take a i guess take a snapshot of this uh, this is strictly the driver's front window and what you see in the schematic is there is the power window master switch and in, within the power master switch is the door multiplex unit which um uh, sends power to and also grounds the power window motor right there um the switches are on top of the, like most power window uh, master switches, the switches are on top um, and all that, that goes onto the circuit board within the logic part of the, the door multiplex unit. And it has a wire coming out um, to feed the motor and the other wire, well, the wire will ground the motor and then it flip flops. They, they trade ground for power to make the motor go in opposite directions to move the window up or down. Also involved in this is something called a pulser. Um, that's part of the power window um, assembly. And that's kind of like a, uh, best thing I can compare it to is like a dual crank position sensor. Um, as, the, as, a crank, as a crankshaft rotates, the crank signal gi gives a signal. Well, this is a case where when the power window motor goes up or down, um, the pulser sends a signal. Actually, there's two signals to the door multiplex unit. And you'll see them on the scope pattern. Um, they're gonna sort of validate when the, the window stops moving and Pretty much, this is also a, a one-touch assembly, which has to be learned, um, where you just touch the switch once and the window continues to move up or down. But nonetheless, um, we're going to scope out this situation. It does still have an issue, um, and it, every now and then it sticks. It looks like the door multiplex unit is sticking and powering the window motor when it, when it, when it shouldn't be. It doesn't know when to say when. It keeps powering the motor when the motor's at the end of its travel, and it, the motor is sort of binding and that sometimes the circuit breaker gets hot and that opens and sometimes the, the power window uh, master switch acts normal. So I have a, I have a, we have an eight channel set up here. It looks like a lot, but just take it one channel at a time um, and take a, um, a copy of the schematic because it's gonna help when we look at the scope patterns. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, channel A is the current clamp. I'm gonna current clamp the motor. Um, we will see current flowing in both directions depending if the, the, when the window is moving up or down. And one thing to point out, which kind of make it easier, anytime the window is moving down, the current will be positive. And you'll see it on the scope. Anytime the, the, the window is moving up, the current will be negative. That's just the way I, I position the clamp. So it's kind of one way or the other. So just bear that in mind. Um, channel, channel B red is the up positive uh, wire coming off the power, the door multiplex unit. Um, when the window is commanded up, that voltage will be high and the voltage on the other end of the motor um, will be low. That 
is um, that is an up command, and it has to have power on the ground for current to flow through that motor to move the window up. Um, the other scenario would be to moving the window down. That is channel uh, C green. That voltage will be high when the window is uh, commanded to be moved down. And of course, the red voltage will be low. They're going to flip-flop uh, depending on the scenario. Uh, one's got to be power, one's got to be ground. They trade situations depending on which way the window is commanded to move. And um, that, is a, uh, that is controlled by the door multiplex unit with the switches on top. Um, the pulsar is something within the power window motor. You'll see that that's sort of a, 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 a like a Hall effect switch that, that um, signals the, the rotation of the motor if it's going up or down. And there are two of them. We're going to sculpt both of them. Um, the pulsar is sort of a, a module. It's got some logic to it. Um, so it needs power and ground. And of course, the logic um, the door multiplex unit needs power and ground. So let me talk about the channels, how we're hooked up. I told you about channel A is the current clamp around the wire going to the motor. Um, channel B is the, um, is the up command. Channel C is the down command. Channel yellow is the, um, that is power to the pulsar unit. So we're not going to talk much about that. It's there on the scope, but uh, the meat and potatoes is, is, is the action between the window and the door multiplex unit. And uh, so that will be the, the, the brunt of, the, of what we're going to discuss here. Then again, the pulsar has a uh, power on the ground. As I said, um, channel E and channel G, purple and gray, are going to be those pulsars. They call them, Honda calls them signal one and signal two. And you'll see them on the scope. It'll make more sense once you see it on the scope. Um, channel G is the ground to the pulsar unit, to the actually the power window motor pulsar assembly. And channel H burgundy is the ground for the entire door multiplex unit. And obviously it has a power. You don't see it there on the illustration. But uh, um, we're not going to concentrate too much on those powers and grounds. They're all going to be good, but be mindful. Anytime we have a situation, you know, where something's intermittently not working, of course we want to look at those powers and grounds. They're real important because they, the, if they were compromised, they could cause issues. But in this case, they do, they are not the issue. The issue is the, um, the door multiplex unit um, assembly is intermittently sticking. The switches are sticking. I'll tell you that right up front. And I will, I have a bunch of scope captures and I'll explain. You'll see all the action. You'll see when it misbehaves and when it behaves. And, um, I've got a, 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 you know, as I said, a, a bunch of captures, and I'll explain each one. So um, we will go to the scope, and uh, I have a, a snapshot right now what's on the scope of a situation, and I'll explain it. Then I'll start going to different scenarios where you can see um, reaction, reaction. We'll see when it's broke and when it's not broke. And let me get this camera in here. All right. Okay. I thought we I thought we stopped recording. We're still going. We're eight minutes in. I'll try to if I can get this.